All right, folks, we're back for the next part in the detail uh, series, I guess, here of uh, setting up our feeder. Um, it's time to hook some gas up. Uh, the gas is uh, something that's going to be uh, your responsibility as a welder to know uh, what type of gas you're supposed to use. Uh, you should have a procedure that tells you. Um, in this case, what we have is 052 flux core. We're running 71T1M. So for the mixed gas we're going to use here in our shop, we're going to use a mixture of argon and CO2 that is 75% argon, 25% CO2. So let's go ahead and look and see what we have for bottles. I'll pull the camera out. <clears throat> so I have a bottle of uh, 7525 uh, or C25 or... Um, argon CO2 uh, mix that's you know 100 names that it goes by C25 is probably the most common and then the bottle next to it which is the same color uh, is 95% argon 5% CO2 or the other way around sorry about that 95% uh, no I said that correct Boy, I'm losing my mind all right at any rate the point being please don't look at the color of the bottle and think you know what kind of gas it is um, if I come over here real quick, I have uh, four bottles of gas on this side that are about the same. I guess one's more blue than green. I have one that's brown and silver. Um, all of those bottles are 95% argon um, and 5% CO2. So again, don't worry about the colors. Also, don't look at the caps. Uh, look at the tag that the manufacturer puts on when they fill the bottle. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the cap off. So let me set the camera down and we'll go ahead and do that. All right, when we uh, get to our bottles, um, the first thing we gotta to do to hook up a new bottle is to remove the cap. Uh, this cap here is coming off pretty easily. This is the way it should be. Um, this cap on the other hand, it's been put on by someone that's trying to show us that they're Hercules. Um, so what do you do if the cap is too tight? Now gas bottle safety is an entire other course, but again, just to cover the high points here of hooking the machine up. Um, don't stick anything inside this hole uh, to remove that cap. If in fact the cap will not come off, um, the safest thing to do is to take a wrench, something like a light hammer, a brass hammer, and very lightly, while turning it, okay, so don't just tap it, but I'm gonna put my hand on this, so I'm turning it, I'm gonna lightly tap the outside. And I'm not trying to beat this up because I don't wanna damage the thread, but a light tap. And you probably can't see it on camera, but I can actually see the rust, little dusticles coming out of here. It's like little smoke particles. And again, I'm just gonna lightly tap. And there it goes. Okay. So you don't have to beat the crap out of it. You don't have to grab a strap wrench. Um, you don't have to be an idiot. Okay. Just turn it lightly with one hand. If it's easier, get a partner to get two hands on it. But again, a very light tap um, without damaging this lower section, which of course has the threads in it. Once the cap is off, okay, I'm going to set that safety cap aside. For right now, I'm just going to set it on top of the machine. Um, I want to go ahead and I want to clear this. There may be debris in there. I could have actually gotten debris in here from the, the rust. This one's not bad, but the cap itself has got uh, some, some rust in it. And don't ever oil these, okay? Uh, big, 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 big no-no, okay? Um, I'll cover that in detail when we talk oxy, oxy fuel, but even though these gases are uh, not containing oxygen, um, don't ever, ever, ever put oil on fittings. And, and if you uh, need to understand uh, why that is, you can go on YouTube and you can look up uh, oil and gas fittings and probably find a hundred videos of people blowing themselves up and doing stupid things. Um, if they're dry, they're dry. It is what it is, folks, okay? So I'm gonna stand back too. I want the valve away from me. I'm gonna crack the valve open and I'm gonna let a little blast of gas come out of here. Now, I don't think this tank has got a lot in it. I think it's about 500 PSI, um, but you might get a, a loud initial blast. Again, you just crack it open, crack it closed, get the debris out. So here we go. That's it, 
set, right? It's, it's not any more complicated than that. So now this has been cleared, we're gonna go ahead and grab a regulator. <clears throat> All right, I've got my regulator. Uh, this, is, this is actually a flow meter regulator. Um, the first thing I wanna check is the orientation. In this case, the flow meter will go on this side. Um, if the regulator is built opposite, and some of them they are, you know, they're not all the same, uh, you may have to rotate the bottle. Um, if I, you know, again, had the uh, vent on the opposite side, the regulator would not be within view. So you may have to turn the bottle. In this case, I don't need to, but just for the camera, I'm gonna see if I can rotate it just a little bit uh, to get a little bit clearer view. And if not, I'll just turn the machine. I suppose that's probably easier. This is turning kind of hard. Um, I want to make sure that, again, that's clear, but I also want to look here, okay? I'm going to pull this up for the camera. The, uh, the end of this has got a little uh, filter, okay? That filter is uh, basically like compressed brass, uh, little spheres all put together. Um, you want to make sure that that's in your regulator. That is designed to prevent dirt and debris from making it inside and permanently opening this. Um, this reduces the pressure from the bottle, which could be 2,500 pounds per square inch, down to about 40 pounds per square inch, thereabouts. And uh, <clears throat> that's why there's no adjustment nut on this. It's permanently set. So I'm going to insert this in and use it only when that filter is in place, okay? I would never use one of these without the filter because God knows what made it inside of there. So I'm gonna insert this and then I'm going to turn this nut. Again, if it's turning hard, uh, it is what it is. You can kind of wiggle this around. It will naturally find its center. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna tighten this down. We're gonna get it finger tight. From there, we're gonna grab a wrench and we're gonna tighten it the rest of the way. And then we're gonna do a leak check on this. So I've got a wrench right here. Uh, if you're using an adjustable wrench, always turn an adjustable wrench towards the adjustable side, okay? So don't turn it this way. So you're turning it away from the adjustable side. Turn it this way. Um, it'll, it'll work better. It'll come out of adjustment less and it will damage the threads uh, less. I don't have a wrench this size in the shop, so I'm using an adjustable. Um, I'm going to hold on to this to make sure this is staying upright and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give this a tight pull. Now if I turn this very slowly, a lot of times this whole assembly will rotate. Um, this can be out of you know, alignment vertically a little bit, but you don't want it out a lot. So again, I'm going to pull this down and snug it up. Make sure it's ergonomically in a position where I can get a hold of. And if it wants to turn on me, I may have to initially start with it back a little bit. But again, I'm just going to, there it goes. If it wants to turn in there, pull it down. Okay. Now, this should not have to be stupid tight, okay? Um, these are machine fittings that are designed to seal up upon contact. So once it's been tightened down, I'm going to open this valve uh, slowly. Now I've only got about 500 pounds per square inch in this tank. Um, that's still a lot of pressure, okay? Now I'm gonna open the valve basically just a little bit and then I'm gonna close it. I'm gonna do what's called a drop check. Now you could hose this down with leak check, um, which is fine, uh, that's great. Uh, but if you have a long harness, um, and again I have here on the floor just for later hookup, I have 50 feet of harness. That harness uh, may be you know, connected with two or three different lengths of harness on a long setup. Um, you could have leaks anywhere in those hoses. And the drop check will not only check the, uh, the connections here, but it will check to see if there's a leak in a hose, which may be uh, beneficial to you. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk away for 10 minutes, and then we're going to come back. All right, 10 minutes later, thereabouts. Um, and if there's a bad leak, you won't have to wait that long. We're gonna come back and we're gonna simply open this valve. Um, if there was a leak, and if I had my gas line and my harness and my feeder, everything hooked up, 
there could be a leak virtually anywhere, but if there was a leak at all, that needle will drop, okay? I don't have to remember what the pressure was when I left. I just have to watch the needle when I open the valve. So I'm gonna watch this carefully. I'm gonna crack the valve open. See the needle jump up, okay? That needle jumped up because gas escaped the system somewhere. So I have a leak. So that's a basic drop check. Um, and again, that'll check. It doesn't tell you where the leak is. That's what the spray is good for, but it will tell you that there's a leak. Um, and it's not uncommon to have a leak in a gas hose. You may have 100 feet of gas hose going to your machine, and this will tell that. So again, I'm going to double check my connections. Since I don't have gas hose hooked up, it's probably right here. This was not very tight when I started. Now, as I mentioned before, I may have difficulty tightening this wrench more without the entire thing rotating. If that happens, and I'm going to tell you right now, we're not beating the crap out of this. This is going to be a light help. But if that happens, we're going to hold the wrench in the direction we want it to turn. I'm going to give it a tap right here. Uh, this is a light tap. Uh, an impact will actually cause this to turn slightly without rotating this, and that's all we're doing. We're not beating this on like a fool. We're just assisting it slightly. So here we go. I'm just going to give that a little bit extra um, and we'll come back in 10 minutes. Now again, I'm going to open the valve, make sure that it's full of gas, and then we'll close it and we'll come back in 10 minutes. All right, 10 minutes later, and since the camera didn't move, you can probably tell that the needle didn't either. But I'm going to go ahead and open the valve. And now I know there are no leaks in this setup, okay? So I'm going to open this all the way up. We're going to go ahead and we're going to hook up our gas line and we're going to check our flow rate. So I'm going to back the camera up just a little bit so we can see the connections. Now, for this particular machine, I have a harness. Um, this harness is shorter uh, than we'll reach. So what I'm going to do is uh, let me do this again. Um, I'll have to edit this. So for this particular machine, being just a bench machine, um, this has a harness. This is this feeder is designed really to be set in a booth uh, with a long length of gas hose that goes back to the gas bank in the shop. So what I have is I have a short length of gas hose to reach from here to here. I'm going to grab that. Again, I could be using 50 feet of harness, 100 feet of harness. Um, I have 150 feet personally at home. Um, this is a quick disconnect gas fitting. I'll cover the hook up here, but basically I'm going to make sure that that's plugged in. Uh, I'm going to route this gas fitting around uh, the, the feeder just so that it's a little less uh, in the way uh, for no other reason. And then I'm going to connect it here. For this fitting to uh, uh, be connected, uh, again, they're all different, but uh, some are just push to connect for quick disconnect. This one has a sleeve. We lift this collar and we press the fitting in. Now I will note that some of the fittings in this particular shop, even though they're the same brand and the same series, have a small ball and there's a notch in the outside of the fitting that has to be aligned before this will go up. Uh, that means if you're dragging the hose across the ground, it doesn't pop uh, off. Uh, for reasons I can't explain, some of these have them and some don't. But basically, you want to lift this up, push the fitting all the way up in, it's really tight, and then lock the collar down, okay? Um, that is your basic setup. Now, when I have a short length of hose, like I have now, um, the gas will go through here and to the feeder very, very quickly, okay? Um, and in fact, uh, I have no idea. I know this was open. I don't know what the flow was set on because it happened so fast. So there's two options. And, and the first option, if you can manage to do this, um, is to press the jog purge button into the purge mode and then look at this um, that's hard to do here in the school. The feeders themselves don't have flow meters and the flow meter are on the bottles, which you know could be 50, 60 feet away. So essentially with the jog purge button, you want to get a helper um, and you can press that button down and then I can see the ball rise up. 
You're looking at the bottom of the hall. I'll bring the camera in closer so we can see uh, this up close. This is definitely something you ought to be uh, uh, mindful of. But again, press the jog purge button. Right now it's on 40. Uh, this is cubic feet per hour, folks. This is not PSI. And there's an adjustment screw on the top. And I can turn that screw with my hand and I can make that adjustment. So again, I'm going to press the purge button. If I want less gas, I turn it down. If I want more, I turn it up. Uh, as a general rule, 40 cubic feet an hour, uh, plus or minus 5 is plenty for flux core for running indoors. But if you're working off a procedure, you use what the procedure says. Um, <clears throat> alternative ways of setting the gas. Okay, let, let's, let's cover a couple of those. So let's take a look here real quick. All right, um, in terms of alternative ways of setting the gas, I know this is a mess. Um, I've actually gone ahead and connected this long harness in line. And I've done this for one reason only. Um, our gas hose comes out here, comes around the back of the feeder into this connection. And it goes through 50 feet of harness and then ultimately uh, back into my, my MIG gun harness right here. I've only done that to simulate that I'm far away. Um, I happen to be standing right next to the bottle so I can hit the purge button easily. But if you can't do that because of physical distance, there's other ways of setting your flow rate. Um, additionally, just for reference, because I mentioned it a minute ago, here's one of those fittings that has that little detent. Uh, so that has to be lined up uh, that little notch has to be lined up with the ball in order for that to come off. So keep that in mind um, when your fitting won't disconnect. What I'm going to do here is uh, get the camera back in its holder. And I am not going to press the jog purge button. I'm simply going to adjust this uh, using method number two. Now method number two is simple. I'm first going to go ahead and close this valve. I want to make sure that the flow is off. Um, I'm going to disconnect my gas line. Now when I did that, the, the line emptied. So right now, like a water hose, the gas can flow into this and fill 50 feet of line. Um, and while that's filling, I have time to set my flow rate. I have to remember that once the line fills and pressurizes, the flow rate will drop off. So again, I'm going to plug this in. If this is closed, there's no flow. I'm gonna open this up. I have just a few seconds. I'm gonna set that at 40. My hands are off, I'm backed away. The line is filling, 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 and the ball is dropping because the line is full. Now let's say, for example, that you didn't have that much time, and you're like, well, you know, I missed it, or maybe I had an itch, or there was someone bugging me, or whatever happened, and you didn't happen to notice what the flow rate was. Or, let's say, for example, I just open that up, that it's already hooked up, and you have no idea what the flow rate is. You know it's not off, but you know it's on, okay? I can simply disconnect, and then when I reconnect, this will go to the flow rate that it's set for a few seconds until the line's filled. So I'm gonna plug it back in, and I can see it's rated at 60, okay? I don't need 60, so I'm gonna to try to make an adjustment, but oh, the line's filling, so I'm not sure I got my adjustment in time. Again, disconnect, reconnect, okay? And you can set the flow. Keep in mind that you don't have all day to make that adjustment because the line is filling. So again, your best bet is to close this first and then make that adjustment. But again, that is one surefire way to know that your flow rate is correct, okay? Let's look at yet one more method I'm gonna bore you with. Again, these videos cover the details, so that's why we're here. Last method coming up next. All right, um, the last method is sure to raise a few eyebrows, um, but I can tell you after uh, 13 years of, of welding at BIW, and, and I've been welding on my own for, for 28 years, um, I, I started at the shipyard in 89 and, and welded for the first 13 years I was there. Um, I ran a lot of machines that didn't have flow meters at all. Okay, so the question is, how do you check the gas? Well, there's a couple of ways to go about that. Um, the safest method is to use this purge button. Okay? 
Um, with the purge button, again, I can, I can hear the gas. Hopefully you can on camera. Okay. Now, you want to keep in mind that when you first press the purge button, the gas in the line is, is, is under pressure. The line itself swells up a little bit because of the pressure, much like a garden hose does in the summer sun. So the initial flow, that first few seconds, is going to be really high. It's a big burst of gas. That's a good thing because it pushes the gas up quick to cover the arc when you first pull the trigger without a pre-flow, okay? But you want to give it a few seconds for the gas to settle down. So I'm going to, again, go by ear, okay? Press the gear first button. Now I can hear the gas flow, okay? And again, if I can feel it lightly on the side of my cheek, um, it's probably good. Um, I don't have a third hand, but again, uh, I use my elbow here. Again, if I uh, look also, I can feel it on the back of my hand, kind of press the button here, okay? okay? You can have a helper do this. Certainly, if you're outside and the wind is blowing, the flow rate is gonna have to be higher than it would be if you're in a shop with no breeze. Uh, again, you can you know, lick the back of your hand if you want to, uh, that will work. And the other question is, you know, how do I do that? Uh, Mr. Carter, if I don't have a jog purge button, because I've run a lot of feeders that don't have those as well. Well, we don't want you getting hurt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift the lid. I'm going to disconnect the drive rolls, okay? And I'm going to back the roll up a little bit, okay? To make sure that the wire is not sticking out. I don't want the wire sticking me in the face because the wire is electrically hot when I pull the trigger. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull the trigger, make sure nothing is, is flowing. In fact, I'm going to go one step further and I'm going to turn the wire feed speed all the way off. Okay, just in case the slim chance that the drive rolls pushed a little bit of wire, I don't want to get poked. I'm going to pull the trigger and again, if I can feel the gas lightly on the back of my hand or if it's winter and I'm wearing gloves and outside, if I can feel the gas lightly, on my cheek, I've probably got enough gas to work with. That's not going to pass muster on any spec, uh, but again, if the spec requires a specific flow rate, they're going to have to give you a means to measure it. Okay, but this does work. All right, and that is it, folks, in terms of setting up your gas. Okay, thank you.